Is Auburn set up to win nationally regarding NIL? You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining me today, special guest, the head man over at On to Victory, Auburn's NIL Collective, Brett. Whiteside, Brett, always a pleasure to chat with you. Thank you for dressing up. That means a ton. Yeah, um, yeah, I did that just for you, Zach. Uh, yeah, totally. Sure, sure. Brett, I mean, there's so much talk, I mean, in general, just because it's the state of college football, but obviously as early signing day gets closer, the portal opens in just a few weeks. NIL is huge when it comes to acquiring talent and competing on the national level in all sports. So my first question to you, is Auburn currently set up to win at the national level regarding NIL? We're well on our way. I yeah. think that's the best way to put it. Auburn is a place that can be a leader in name, image, and likeness. It has a fan base that has always supported Auburn, has always stepped up to the plate, and wanted to make a positive impact on this great school. And so we absolutely have all the tor- tools, resources, infrastructure, alignment. But as we're going to talk a little bit more about here in a second – it's going to take all of us. That's the key message here. Yes, we can be a leader in name, image, and likeness. We can do what it takes to be able to attract and retain top talent across the country from all sports, but it's going to take all of the Auburn family to get there. You said a key word in there that that I think a lot of people, myself included, potentially overlook. With this transfer portal era, we always think about, well, we got to go out and get talent. But that word retain. Yeah. That word retain as far as keeping these guys that could transfer at any moment, that's gotta be that's gotta be one of the tougher elements to this. Absolutely. You know, I you kind of know my background working in 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 football and, and being a part of a staff. I empathize sure. with our coaches and what they're going through right now. It's a very difficult time to be a coach from a lot of sports because you are navigating brand new things within collegiate athletics. You're navigating a locker room and a group of people during a time when, you know, you have different valuations for different people, different NIL deals, different brands reaching out to different players. And it's kind of fast tracking them towards what life's going to be like in professional sports. And Mm -hmm. they're just having to do it a little bit earlier than they had originally planned. But, you know, from my experience so far, I think our coaches are doing a great job navigating that and and putting an emphasis on culture and making sure that, that we're doing things the right way. Yeah. The constant involvement of recruiting your own players to make sure everybody's happy I know the staff is limited when it comes to, you know, communicating about NIL and all that. You guys obviously aren't as the collective. Does that kind of fall more on you guys to make sure, hey, are you happy? Are we good with everything? Are you fulfilling everything or, or, you know, that that open communication? Is that more on you, Brett, and your staff or? Yeah, I think I think it's a there's a common misconception about our role, both on the current team and and future team. Right. I think it's really important and a point that I want to make to everyone that in the recruitment process on the victory, we're not involved until a player signs with Auburn and we don't offer a contract until they enroll at Auburn. And so we're really not involved in the recruitment process at all leading up to that point. But that puts the burden on our coaches to be able to give fact-based information to recruits about perspective, prospective opportunities based off of what the collective has done with some of the current team. Um, You know, yeah, we absolutely want to work with the student athletes that are here currently on our campus to find ways that we can provide them additional opportunities. Uh, I think a key point is that we're not an agent for the players and we don't require exclusivity of the players. So what they receive from the collective should not be expected to be 100% of their NIL valuation. And a lot of them have done a great job of their own personal branding and reaching out to local and regional businesses to support them, to endorse their products and services. So I think our student athletes are doing a great job and we want to be a resource to help them uh, navigate this this new area. Sure. So this has to be an extremely interesting time of year for you guys because I, I assume you're going to have a lot of deals with players that you aren't aware of yet with because with, you don't know who across the country mm-hmm. is going to enter the portal. You know, guys flip at the last second all throughout college football, especially with the way this staff is is recruiting, Brett. So how do you kind of prepare for that? Or is it just kind of trial and error? And it's like, okay, we've done this a few times. We've kind of got a little bit of an idea, but you're still kind of adjusting on the go. 
You know, we have ways of, of being able to try to forecast what it might look like. That's really all we can do, right? And it and it's almost like, uh, you know, looking at this as here's the support that we're receiving currently from our fans and donors, and and this is what we can likely allocate over this next year. And and so we do have those constraints. Uh, football early signing days five weeks from tomorrow. So we're obviously trying to make a push right now yeah. to uh, have as many people involved, which means, you know, as, as much resources as we can into the 24 calendar year to support football in, in all of our sports. We've done over 300 NIL deals over the last 16 months from 13 different sports, nine mm-hmm. of them were full team deals. So this, you know, we focus a lot on football right now, but, um, this is impacting all of our sports. Uh, several of our sports just had a signing day themselves and did really well. And I know NIL came up in all of those conversations too. Sure. Absolutely. So you mentioned support. An anonymous donor has given a million dollars to on to victory. Uh, kind of give us some of the details of that. Cause it does involve everyone else too. Yeah. Let's go back 16 months when on to victory got started, you know, okay. the way that, that our board knew that we could make an immediate impact in this, which we needed to do at that time, we felt like we were far behind, is to launch a major giving campaign. And just as Auburn people and Auburn fans have always done, we had a lot of folks step to the table, make major gifts, allowed us to support at a really high level in the beginning. What we've learned over the last 16 months is for us to have the success that we're going to need against peer institutions like Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Ole Miss, Texas A&M, Texas, Oklahoma now, it's going to take all of us to do this. And so one of our major donors stepped up and said, I'm willing to match a million dollars to encourage the Auburn family to help join us as well. Uh, So when we hit 2,000 members, hopefully soon, we'll get a $250,000 match. When we hit 3,000, another 250, 4,000, and then 5,000 for that final 1 million. So uh, five weeks from tomorrow is, is football early signing day. And we're trying to make that push to have 5,000 members by then. So what's the best way for Auburn fans to sprint over to on to victory to, to help out with us? Yeah, on to victory.com. Um, one of the things that we've also recognized over the last 16 months is, you know, what are some ways in which we can provide some benefits and values to the Auburn fans who are supporting? Yeah. You know, our model is number one, our, our board can never benefit and financially they'll never receive compensation. But number two, that we operate um, with a 10% overhead cost. So 90% of all donations go directly to student athletes. So we didn't invest a lot in benefits and perks uh, intentionally. Uh, we've recognized now a lot of people want to see, you know, how can how can I benefit additionally from this? So we've engaged with a new group who has some really unique offerings. For example, when you link your card there's over 18,000 national retailers that you can receive cash back from from those. CVS, Walgreens, Starbucks, Delta, Home Depot, uh, but locally too. Mama Goldberg's halftimes here in Auburn. If you go to Mama Goldberg's, you get 10% cash back. And so it could end up being cost neutral for a lot of folks. So we're trying to provide those types of cash back rewards. We're doing some So sweepstakes, giveaways, obviously events with athletes and keeping people informed on what we're doing. War Eagle Plus is a new, unique content service that Auburn Athletics has partnered with Sport and Story on. They've got over 87 pieces of unique digital content that you can obtain right now uh, by going through us as, as the provider for that. Uh, if you subscribe at our $34 a month level or beyond, you get free access to that. It's $165 annual value. So just trying to provide opportunities for folks to get involved, support our student athletes, and, and get something in return. All right, Brett, I want to ask you some other questions about some of the logistics uh, of what you guys are, are battling as the the whole world of college football is shifting its focus. That's coming up next right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. It's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. 
It's all there at eBay Motors with uh, over 122 million parts for your ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit or you get your money back. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Brett Whiteside, our guest on today's edition of Locked on Auburn. So in regards to how a, a, an NIL deal works as soon as a player gets on campus, do they just do they come, just to, come your to your office, office? And, and then they set everything up at that point or because there, there's no communication prior to that, right? Yeah, no communication prior. So, you know, we've also, as the official collective of the Auburn Tigers, we work very closely with the university and the compliance office to ensure that we hit those checkpoints properly. So upon their uh, them signing with the university, you know, we can engage in a phone conversation, let them know, hey, we'd like to visit with you when you get on campus. This is what a deal structure might look like. This is what we would want you to do for us. And this could be the compensation for those things. Um, here are the opportunities that we have for you. And then once they become a student athlete at Auburn, you know, Onda Victory's mission is to support Auburn student athletes. And so when they be then uh, become enrolled students, and at that point, we would sit down with them, talk through a, a formal contract, and uh, go from there. Sure. So if a, if a player is contemplating transferring, Brad, or contemplating leaving, and they want to relook at their deal, do they do they approach you guys? Is there set times throughout the year where every player meets with On to Victory? What does that process look like? A lot of the athletes come into our office every month. So that's okay. kind of part of their requirement. And so, you know, I would think that if those athletes have those types of questions, they would come and talk to us. Um, you know, NIL is, is there's not been a whole lot of guidance from the NCAA or the conference on NIL. But one of the things is should not be used for an inducement to um, to enroll or to remain enrolled. Mm -hmm. And so if an athlete were to enter the portal, you know, there's probably not going to be a lot of opportunities that on to victory is going to provide to them. Because at that moment, they've decided to leave. We're not going to go trying to chase them and, and try to encourage them to get out of the portal and come back. Uh, if they enter the portal, they're probably gone. Mm -hmm. But um, we could have a conversation before them if that's really what it's all about. Now, you know, I think we try to provide opportunities as they come about, you know. And, and so I think that's a common misconception, too. Um, sure. As, as opportunities present themselves, we'll make them available to athletes. It's not just something that's discussed once a year. How often is, does the NCAA offer guidance for how this is going to work? That was a big national storyline when all this happened and all these crazy deals are being thrown out there where it's like, okay, until the NCAA says something, like we don't really know how to, how to move forward. Has that gotten better, Brett, or we've all just kind of figured out that, okay, these are the rules and – I guess this is kind of what we need to be doing. Yeah, they've. I think they've released five written documents uh, okay. surrounding name, image, and likeness. We obviously read those, and there's interpretations that come out. Um, you know, how the collective operates, because we're made up of boosters, reflects on the university. So we, we try not to act without the university kind of giving us some guidance of, of how that could be uh, perceived. Um, so we move move cautiously. You know, it's it's a little frustrating on our end that we're an outside separate entity, but at the same time we have to play by all of, all of their rules as well. But sure, people are pushing legislation that could change that. We'll see what it looks like. Yeah, I got you. I got you because it does seem like, and this stood out to me. You know, shortly after you you, you started this role, um, you sat down with me to answer a bunch of my questions, and I and I appreciate that. The the way you guys have handled it versus how it seems like other schools have, I mean, you guys are are straight and narrow by the book, it seems like. And as the NCAA continues to kind of say, okay, we're going to enforce this more, I think Auburn fans should feel almost excited about that because you guys yeah, are – you know, I've, I've, read a lot of, I've read a lot of the bills that are out there and, you know, and they're for, for the most part, we're doing everything that's included in that. Um, you know, outside of – you know, number one, they want you to, to disclose what everybody's receiving, which we're not going to do. We think that's private information for the athletes. Sure. Um, you know, they want to change up our contracts and create standard contracts, which 
you know, we've spent a lot of time and energy and resources in developing a contract that we think is fair for both the athlete, the collective and its supporters. So I wouldn't be in favor of that. But as far as, you know, fair deals and not requiring exclusivity in perpetuity, like there's a lot of bad NIL deals out there that are coming to light. And so they're becoming a lot fewer. But no, we're happy with how we're doing it. And like you said, we're we believe we're doing everything the right way. Our, our board leadership uh, requires that. Um, our university feels comfortable with what we're doing, you know, from our board of trustees through our president, through our athletics director. I just think we have great alignment in this area right now, which is going to be key as we continue to navigate this. Brett, one more time, if folks want to support On to Victory and Auburn Athletics, all sports, like you said, what's the best way for them to do that? Go to ontovictory.com. You can join our membership. Um, you can see all the perks and benefits that you can get. You can click on other ways to give to directly support any sport that you would like or sport. So we have a lot of different options for you out there. But number one, also, I, I hope that folks will understand that On to Victory is doing this the right way. NIL is here to stay. We're providing great services and education to our athletes. They can feel good about what we're doing. You know, one key service that, that doesn't get talked about a lot is the education around taxes. Mm. Student athletes are independent contractors. They're receiving a 1099. And we provide a service to where we withhold quarterly estimations for them, remit that to the IRS and to the state quarterly. And we provide them with three local accountants in town to help them file their uh, their taxes every year. So I think we're doing a lot of great things to support our student athletes and Auburn family can feel comfortable that, that we're doing it the right way. Absolutely. Brett Whiteside over at On to Victory hanging out with us. Thank you so much for your time, Brett. Really appreciate it. Unrelated, our next guest, Brian Smith, joins us to talk about recruiting in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. All right, today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Right now, new customers at FanDuel can get $150 in bonus bets with winning any $5 money line bet to so just bet on the Tigers money line this week and you'll get 150 bucks. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. What, 22 points for the Auburn Tigers this week is the spread? I like it. I like it, especially if they're going to beat Arkansas by that much on the road. They should be able to take care of business against New Mexico State. So check out the FanDuel app. They've got spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Once again, FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off your sports winning and keep the football season going. Once again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. It's time now to talk Cruton. We're joined by Brian Smith. And man, since you last came on the show, <laughs> Auburn got busy, Brian. I mean, what an incredible <laughs> thing for the Auburn Tigers. They destroy Arkansas and then they... They add so much uh, to the next two classes. So let's start with the guy who I think is the biggest impact here, flipping Jamonta Waller from Florida to Auburn. I mean, this is a guy that can rush the passer with the best of them. There's a reason I went to go all the way to Mississippi to see him play. Um, I don't drive to Mississippi randomly. Um, this kid is the pure edge rusher you're looking for, speed, yeah. explosion, flexibility, tenacity. And quite frankly, just a guy that takes his craft very serious. I'd already basically done my evaluation before the game started, just watching him do pass rush moves. It was fun to watch. He is a nasty, nasty football player and one that could also play off-ball linebacker for the Tigers. He's going to be a lot of fun for Auburn fans to get to know. Yeah, he, you know, it's tough to see guys come in and rush the passer effectively. Yeah. In year one, I mean, it usually takes a few years, even the great. So it usually takes a while. Is that kind of what you see with him? Maybe come in as, I think he's going to play, so I don't think he'll be a red shirt, but maybe as a sophomore or a junior, become one of the top pass rushers in the SEC. Is that a realistic goal here? Sophomore year, I could see it. Freshman, I don't like projecting like you. It's tough. You know, there's, yeah, it, I mean, competition's as good as it gets, and it's not like Auburn doesn't hand out scholarships to other players, too. He's got to compete, and I'm sure they're going to bring in somebody from the portal, etc. But, I mean, if he's not in the starting lineup as a sophomore, I'd be surprised. Because, again, this is a very key point. He's not just a pass rusher. He will go across the field. There were several plays where the other team's quarterback, who's a freak athlete committed to Notre Dame, he'd run him down from behind, and he's 40 pounds, 50 pounds heavier. Yeah, This kid can go. 
I think they're going to use him in packages for nickel, for dime, and move him around. You might see him blitz from an inside linebacker position. They'll find a way to get him on the field. But by his sophomore year, hopefully they can find the specific spot that he fits in the best. Yeah, I, I just I love the idea of pairing him with Joseph Phillips in this oh, class. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, That's it just, good players. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're two or three years away from, okay, you know, Phillips on one side, Waller on the other, and it's like, all right, race you to the quarterback. I mean, that's just going to be such an awesome situation down the sure. road. Demarcus Riddick's a guy that they probably feel good about eventually rushing the passer as well. You like Malik Blockton as a pass rusher. Ooh, You've talked yes. about that before, too. I mean, this is a great <laughs> – you win in the SEC by rushing the passer and winning in the trenches, and, and Auburn has the defensive side of that taken care of in this class. It looks great. If you can consistently recruit similar to what they are right now – you can be a top four SEC team in any given year if you've got an offense mm -hmm. because the defense will keep you in the games. They're going to eat people up with what they're recruiting on, on the defensive side. That's not any secret, and they're still trying to add more, but this is a great start, and even if it's just one or two more pieces they add, this is an excellent Auburn defensive front seven and defense overall for the future. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Laquan Robinson. Most places have him as the top JUCO safety. Mm -hmm. In this class, Brian, we haven't really talked about the philosophy of adding Juco players. I like Juco players. I always have. I, I always I have. There is a very real chance that we got to see what Jalen Simpson does. He may go pro. He may stay. We'll see. But when you look at Laquan Robinson, he could be starting for Auburn at safety next year. They need help there even if everybody comes back because they've been fortunate this year that more guys weren't banged up at that spot. You know, Jay would have missed like four games in a row. Where would Auburn's defense have been? It's hard to replace guys like that. Sure. And you want to rotate players. And this kid's a flat out thumper high school film, et cetera. It doesn't matter which, which film you pull up. He can go get it. He's from the state. He knows the Auburn program. This is a good fit. And he's also physically ready. I think that's probably, if I was to guess, one of the reasons you like junior college players, yeah. especially for a Southeastern Conference program. It's different, man. Like, you've been on the field before, too. It, when you walk onto the field of an SEC game and one of the offensive or defensive linemen walks by you, you're like, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you even as a DB, you better be in, like, boxer kind of shape because you're going to have to hit some of those guys at some point. It may not be friendly, but at least be able to absorb it a little bit. This kid's going to walk in physically ready to play, and yeah. Auburn's going to be better for it. So I, I agree. I, I like the high-end Juco kids. Give them to me all day. Yeah, ESPN had him as a four-star coming out of high school. He's a three-star across the board from a Juco. So that's worth it's worth noting. And also Ole Miss. So it's down to Auburn and Ole Miss. So it's not like it was Auburn versus a smaller school, even though Ole Miss is not as good as Auburn. All right, Ryan G., the 2025 tight end commitment. You did a write-up on him at AuburnDaily.com, Brian. You like this guy. This is a guy you have on the field a bunch down the road just because of his ability to block in space. If you can't have tight ends blocking in your screen game and doing so effectively, ain't going to go well. I don't care what program you're at. But especially if you look at what you Freeze has done when he was at Ole Miss and now he's at Auburn, they need guys that can be flexible in that. Playing the hip, as they say, the H-back, maybe even move him into the backfield occasionally. And he can catch, too. He's not just a big ogre playing tight end. He's an athlete. This young man made a point that said, hey, you know, closer to home was the reason I came and everything else. That's great. He loved the staff. Auburn's going to benefit because he's going to fit right into what you does. And they need probably one one guy kind of like him in every class. Um, he's a good kid, too. I think Auburn fans are going to like him. And he's yeah. going to be a really good tight end for them on the planes. Yeah, I, I think so. He's got the body type. And just the fact that he's got another year of high school to develop even That's more, exactly I think is, right. I think it's encouraging. I think it's encouraging. All right, let's look to the hypothetical just for a second. As we record sure. this on Tuesday afternoon, there is so much smoke around Cam Coleman decommitting from Texas A&M one, and then two flipping to Auburn or Florida State. But just talking to folks in it, the the push that Auburn is making for Cam Coleman seems very very real. You see Perry Thompson tweeting out a picture of Hugh Freeze holding a fish, which is kind of, we're assuming is a bat signal of some sort that something's happening. Right. And, and everybody's assuming that there's a good chance that it's Cam Coleman. 
What does this mean? If Auburn lands Cam Coleman in this class, what does it mean? Well, it changes the dynamic of your program in multiple ways. Number one, you're getting arguably the best player in the state of Alabama in the class of 24. That never goes out of style. You're yeah. getting back into Phoenix Central with an elite player. And you're also taking him away from one of your rivals and quite honestly, a whole bunch of them. Florida mm -hmm. State included because they, they're going to bump heads a lot in recruiting. You got to win some of these, man. We've talked about this on this show off the air. If yeah. you're going to be a national football program, you have to hit your backyard first. And quite honestly, Central is probably the most important program to the Auburn Tigers. They had to do that. Finally, there's nothing like just throwing it up on third and eight. I don't know where else to go. And the guy just catches it and beats your opponent. Cam Coleman can do that. If you have not watched his film, I urge you, go search for Cam Coleman film on any search engine you want. You will not be disappointed. Tremendous football player. Does the value or potential impact of a Cam Coleman become greater because Perry Thompson's already on board? Oh, absolutely. It's real simple. It's called math. You only have so many guys you can double, and there's one on a play. So if Perry gets single covered, then he's got the advantage. If you double anybody else, then you know he's single. It just goes back and forth. And of course, Cam's probably the one they're going to double. But Perry Thompson's a top 50 kid by every measurement there is, too. Yeah. And they've got other receivers in this class that are underrated. Like Kane can go. I love Bryce Kane in the slot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, the slot position is the cheat code in college football. I was talking about this on another show earlier today. Sure. There aren't enough corners for the outside, let alone the nickel spot. Good point. So who's guarding him? And now you're worried about that guy over there. And both these kids are big, physical young men. If they buy into the blocking stuff, and that's something Freeze will preach. Yeah. In the screen game, Kane could be their number one receiver in terms of yards per play and yak because he's got humongous receivers blocking for him. I mean, Auburn's offense takes off. You are correct to bring up the Perry Thompson thing because now teams have to play wider. That opens up the run game, the quarterback game, RPO. Yeah. It is a full slate. It's basically what Ole Miss had. They had big receivers. They were annoying. You knew what they were going to do, but you can't match it because they, they spread you out so much with size. It was really hard. Auburn could Tell be in that situation too. Sorry to cut you off, Brian. Tell me what you know about Kai Bates. So this is a guy, four-star across the board, was committed to LSU, decommitted just a few days ago, and you're hearing and reading some stuff about Auburn possibly being involved in this. What, what's the latest here? We're talking about a big time corner. If you're going to, we just mentioned a minute ago, Waller, Robinson, et cetera. You just need to keep adding defensive pieces. Well, guys that are over six, one that are about 200 pounds coming out of high school and can play corner are on the menu every day of the week. And this is a kid Auburn's tried to get involved with. I'm going to go see him Friday to find out more. He's a great kid, great. but this is an impact kind of guy. I mean, he had the Alabamas and the LSUs as, you know, like Saban, yeah, he gave me a Saban story recently. Like he's involved at the highest levels of recruiting. Auburn would do very well. And this is a kid that would play early if he signed with him. So I'm, I'm curious to see where it's at. I don't know all the specifics yet. I'd rather get it from the horse's mouth. But man, you can't go wrong with getting big time four to DBs. Yeah. So Brian will have an update uh, after he watches them on Friday. That'll be at auburndaily.com as well as here next time we talk. Brian, in the meantime, how can people check out everything that you've got going on? Well, Auburn Daily is your best source, but uh, at FB Scout underscore Florida on X, formerly known as Twitter, a little bit of everything. Um, this is my time of year. It's randomness with decommitments, flips, and there's going to be a few more Auburn related and un unrelated coming up here pretty soon with some kids that it's just that time of year, man. It's Christmas yeah. for me in a different way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. So uh, be sure to subscribe to Locked on Auburn so you don't miss all of Brian's recruiting updates and check out auburndaily.com for all of both of our written work. We will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.